Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Rick Hardy, head of school of Concord Academy. Concord Academy is a co-ed independent college preparatory boarding and day school for students in grades 9 through 12. Rick has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Rick, for joining us today. And thank you for having me, Mark. So tell us about what makes Concord Academy unique. Well, I think one of the things that makes us unique is that um, there's no typical CA student. Uh, CA is the short version of Concord Academy. Uh, there's no CA type. Um, part of what we're trying to do is to ignite students' passions, to help them to, to discover their own paths. And to us, every path, every individual um, is important. Um, I think part of that stems from our history as a girls' school. Um, for the first 50 years of its history, uh, Concord Academy was really one of the preeminent um, boarding and day girls' schools in the U.S. Um, and when we went co-ed, um, I don't think we, I think we retained um, that identity. Um, a girls' school um, is less focused uh, around competition, uh, more focused on the notion of collaboration, on those elemental connections between students and students, um, teachers and students, and I think we retained that. Um, Concord Academy doesn't have academic prizes, and so what drives, what animates uh, most of what happens there uh, doesn't revolve around the desire to or the impetus toward winning a prize, um, but more toward learning for learning's sake. Um, and unlike, I think, a lot of girls' schools, um, that when they went co-ed became rather subsumed by uh, the typical, you know, boys' school culture, uh, Concord Academy did not. And I think because of that, we're rather unique um, in that regard. Um, you see that um, valuing of the individual in the chapel tradition. Um, the chapel tradition is one, I think, that is unique among schools. Um, three and sometimes four days a week, we give over the start of the day to a single senior um, telling his or her story. And I remember when I heard um, that Concord did this uh, five years ago when I was interviewing for the job, and I said, well, let me get this straight. Um, you start the day, the first 15 minutes of the day, listening to a single senior. You don't know what that student is going to say. Uh, and once that student steps to the podium, you have no control over <laughs> what that student is going to do. How's that working for you? Um, and then I saw my first chapel talk as an interviewee, by the way, for this job, and I was knocked flat. Um, the way in which this young woman um, told the story of her personal history and her family's history uh, was so poignant and so affecting. And what struck me as well was I was experiencing um, the sound of 400 people listening uh, to a single person. Um, and I was very moved by that, and I thought, I can't think of another school um, that is so willing to give over this moment and therefore to honor um, each individual um, in this way. And over the four plus years that I've been at Concord, um, the impression that that builds a sense of community and honors every single individual and animates, therefore, um, the ethos of the school um, has only been reinforced for me. I think about um, the way in which then um, that translates into what we're trying to encourage each and every student to do. Uh, as I said, there is no one path, there is no one mold for a Concord student. Uh, we're really trying to ignite their passions wherever they are. And the simplest way to capture this is uh, we want students to be the best person that they can be, the best uh, individual that they can be, not from some sort of mold. There's no CA student, but who do you want to be? What do you want to pursue? and we'll make that happen. So often, college preparatory brings with it a connotation of a path that needs to be pursued in order to ultimately get into this school or that school, yeah. a particular track, yeah. a particular level, yeah. um, and, and there is this connotation um, of excellence. Yeah. Even with, but excellence being defined by, in competition yeah with somebody else, where you fit on the hierarchy right. of, of people. How do you finesse that, that mentality? It can't just be a matter of history. How do you build those attitudes into your DNA? Yeah, it's, it's a good question and it's a fair question because let's face it, every school, and Concord included, uh, part of what draws people to this um, experience is the sense that we're gonna prepare their sons and daughters mm -hmm. 
uh, for you know a selective college environment, college or university environment, and we do that. Um, but but families who are more outcome focused um, may be a bit disappointed. That said, um, I think that we are distinct, and that competition doesn't animate what we do. Um, I mentioned that we don't have academic prizes. Um, students will rise to expectations. They rise to expectations from teachers who are passionate and they look around themselves and they see peers who are equally passionate. And I think that has a kind of, um, um, it catches their attention. Um, it's contagious um, in a way. Um, but it isn't revolving around separating yourself from, from the pack uh, by beating out this student or this one. Um, and we do reinforce that, again, by listening, uh, but also by encouraging kids to pursue their passions regardless uh, of concern for outcome. Now, I think sometimes that can be a concern to parents because they're concerned about uh, grade point averages, uh, but our students tend to pursue those courses that they want to pursue regardless uh, of level, regardless of the level of difficulty. So are you seeking intrinsic motivation, or at least if not seeking it, helping the the student to find it as opposed to uh, being incented by external factors. You know, one of the things that is so difficult for a parent to do is we reach that inflection point where you have to let go. This is a learning experience for parents as well. Uh, remember, they send their sons and daughters to us when they're 14. And I think most parents at that age are still hovering pretty close uh, to their Sons well, and except daughters. for except for you and you and well, me, except for you and me, we're yeah, we're yeah, clearly yeah. the exceptions there. Um, but I think what what part of what we're trying to teach them is that in order for students to be where we want them to be, um, they've got to embrace their own paths. They've got to become self advocates. If we do that and we do that work well, when they leave us, they'll be ready to take on any number of challenges. We call it common trust at at Concord, but it really does revolve around allowing students the opportunity to take control of their own learning, of their own education, and then supporting them along the way. I think that part of what we do well is when students come to us at 14 or so, um, we don't assume that they are ready to take on all the responsibility of managing every certain portion of their lives. We do support them. Uh, the way in which we do advising places an adult very close to them every single week. And so giving them that sort of support nurtures them in a way that allows them over time to take greater control so that when they become seniors they're ready not only to give this chapel talk uh, but to advocate for themselves and to tell us where they want to attend college. Obviously that's that's a function also of where they get in um, but part of what we're trying to do with their families is to emphasize fit between them and the next school that they'll attend. How do you cultivate faculty to continue this tradition because your faculty come from other places as yeah, well and you yeah. do have certain turnover. Yeah. How does that work? Well, part of it is orienting and part of them, part of it is hiring really well. Um, we know that not every teacher, not every candidate that comes to us is going to be a fit with us. Um, we try to identify uh, teachers who not only are, are skilled and, and knowledgeable about their subjects, um, but are ready to engage in the way that we believe teachers have to engage in order for education to happen at Concord the way we want it to. Um, that involves a closer relationship between students and teachers um, than is typical. Uh, that involves teachers who are willing to advise in the way that we do it. Um, most schools do a kind of group advisory. If you, if you have advisees, you've got six or seven or eight, and you meet them as a group uh, probably once a week for 15 or 20 minutes. Um, we approach advising differently. Um, every advisor meets with every single advisee for a half hour once a week. Um, that's a greater investment than many schools and, and many teachers are willing to make. Um, in addition to that, um, we're trying to, to emphasize um, learning beyond the classroom. So we want teachers who are going to be involved in the lives of their students outside of what they do in their subject areas. And again, that's not for everybody. Um, I mentioned that we're a boarding and day school. Uh, the day tends to extend uh, beyond when the last school bell rings at about 3 o'clock. Uh, we've got students, uh, we've got teachers who are working in our residential houses. They're coaching. Um, they're doing all manner of things that extend that relationship. Um, that's not for every um, teacher. Um, so we're very selective. 
And once they're here, um, we mentor them, we support them, and in the same way that we mentor and support students who are new to Concord Academy, we mentor and support teachers who are new to Concord as well. In terms of, of your non-academic programs that cultivate that type of leadership yeah. and that type of civic engage, engagement, uh, talk, talk about that aspect of, of your school. Yeah. The, the, um, one of the things that we do is in preparation for senior year, um, and this is something that, that um, I brought about in, in uh, collaboration with our Dean of Students. Um, we bring the entire junior class um, in the spring of their junior year um, away for a retreat. And part of what we do is we talk about leadership and ask them to think intentionally about what it will mean to be a leader, what it will mean to be the seniors, and therefore the tone setters for um, the school in the coming year. We ask them to be intentional, and then, again, we give them the opportunity through group work, through town hall discussions conducted largely on their own, the opportunity to begin taking the reins, to practice the skills that they're going to have to model um, and have in place when they are the leaders of the school. Um, we think that's a way of helping kids to prepare for the roles that we want them to take on. Um, and the dean and I um, co-lead um, that retreat. So we've got, you know, between 95 and 100 uh, juniors. Uh, we've also got the head class advisors with us, but four adults, including me and the dean of students, um, who are working with these kids. Um, and I think what they see is that's a pretty significant adult investment um, to take an entire weekend away and say, look, we want to do some work with you. Um, but I think that it means a lot to them. I think they come away feeling as though these adults really are invested in us. Um, and there is something that they're expecting of us. And, and both that, that, that trust that we're placing in them and the opportunity um, to do something meaningful to, for the school uh, translates, I think, into leadership that really means something that isn't just, as I said, a title on a resume. Does the school have strategic alliances or cooperative partnerships with any other institutions in the area? We've got, um, we do a lot of community service. So over the years, we've built uh, partnerships with, um, there's an organization called Gaining Ground, um, which is, I think, about 20 years old. And what they do is um, grow food that will be donated entirely to soup kitchens and various other concerns. Uh, we partner with them. Uh, we do community service trips. Um, this year we did a community service trip to Nicaragua to set up um, libraries and villages there. Uh, we did um, a community service trip to an Indian reservation in South Dakota. Uh, we've been to the Ninth Ward every year since Hurricane Katrina. So Ninth we, Ward in New Orleans. In New Orleans. And we've built these alliances over a period of years. Um, we also work with the Arlington Street Unitarian Church on various um, initiatives in and around Boston. Um, probably too many to name, um, but these are opportunities for kids to have meaningful uh, impact. On Civic the engagement. Civic engagement beyond Concord Academy. In terms of how your governance works, um, is, is your board made up of, of current parents or is it, uh, is it past alums or, or past parents? Yeah, it's roughly 50-50 past uh, uh, parents, uh, some current parents, and then half of our board members are alums. Um, and that's a pretty good mix because while you certainly want some, you know, past or current parents because they've got that orientation, uh, you also want alums who lived it um, in their own time and, and can speak to that experience in a really powerful way. Do you think the next 5, 10, 15 years of Concord Academy is going to look like the last uh, 15 years? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, while on the one hand, I think we're going to build on our history. I mean, that's something that's really important to us. We're a really good school. Our goal with our current strategic plan is to become better. Um, we just celebrated 90 years, um, and that was a great opportunity for us to both celebrate our past accomplishments and talk about where we want to head into the future. Uh, but we have very ambitious plans for where we're going to be uh, at our centennial in 2023. So, so unpack those, those plans for us. Well, it, it really revolves around, um, I mean, we, I know well uh, that Concord has a powerful impact on students. 
Um, I believe that we do a remarkable job of allowing students to pursue their passions. We've had a reputation as being a kind of artsy school, um, and that's actually a, a reputation that is narrower than the reality. Um, we certainly have a strong visual and performing arts department, um, but we also have strong math and science, and over the last period of years, we've sent a number of students away to MIT, Johns Hopkins, Carnegie Mellon, and other schools like that. Um, I prefer to think of it as Concord as, as a school that is powerful and creative across all disciplines. Um, but given the fact that we're a school whose reputation isn't necessarily accurately known, um, part of what I want to do is to assert ourselves um, and our value um, authentically and intentionally over the next period of years um, in order that more people will know about us. So it's not just being excellent, it's communicating that you are excellent. Yes, very interesting. We did a retreat with the board um, two years ago and part of what we were very pleased about was the sense that we have a really powerful impact on students and we send them out into the world and they have a powerful impact in whatever paths they choose. But that's not the only way that we think we can be influential. Um, we think that we can be a center for learning, um, not in simply asserting, we'll do it the Concord Academy way and you'll prosper as a school, but to see ourselves as a place where conversation about best practices can happen. So put on your, your own skeptical financial hat. Sure. If you're going to invest in marketing, Concord Academy, yeah. what is the return on that investment? I'd say it begins with better outcomes for students. Um, and, and let me, you know, let me emphasize, I think Concord is really good at teaching and learning. Uh, I believe the experience we offer um, students is second to none. That said, um, we have to be willing to invest in continually refining the craft of teaching. So we're looking to invest in, in ongoing curricular review to ensure that what we're doing with students is relevant and meaningful into the future. We're investing in adults, so when we think about the, the payoff for students, better outcomes, better experiences for them, we're also hoping to offer that to prospective teachers to say, if you come here, we're aiming to make it feel like graduate school with a paycheck in and, an ongoing way. And isn't that the definition of entrepreneurship or educational entrepreneurship? Isn't that the, the way you keep yourself fresh and you challenge yourself, you find your own intrinsic motivation, yeah. taking your own example and topping yourself? Isn't that what you're trying to do with your students? That is what we're trying to do. And, uh, and I would say we're also trying to build into that um, most schools um, don't make the opportunity to reflect and step back and, and build a new idea or a new course. They don't create those opportunities for every teacher. Um, just this year, we are doing that for our department chair so that they can do some curricular review. Prior to this, that was simply added to their workload. What we're aiming to do is to make that opportunity available to every single teacher so that and it's an idea kind of borrowed from the high-tech world. I, I won't necessarily name the company, but there's a company that is saying every single week, every employee has to do some kind of out-of-the-box thinking. We want to make that same opportunity available to our teachers so that we begin to redefine what it means to be a teacher. Yes, it's teaching your classes, advising your students, and being involved in their lives beyond the classroom, but it also is being an entrepreneur, being an innovator, being a creator of content. We think redefining teaching and redefining what's possible in schools is part of what we can do and part of what we must do in order to bring ourselves into the next age. And by modeling that behavior, you can inspire students to do that in their own life because we don't know what these students are going to encounter. Right. Yeah, exactly right. And, and we've discovered um, readily enough um, that given uh, a model, given an opportunity, students will run with it. And we believe that our adults are going to run with it as well. Well, Rick Hardy, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us at Concord Academy. And thank you so much for your insights. Thanks for having me, Mark. It's been a pleasure.